welcome. My name is Dr. Andrea Ryan, and I am excited to be here. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you uh, joining us on this Wednesday evening. And tonight we're talking all about essential oils for families. And I am going to just call out the elephant in the room in the meantime before we even get started here. So uh, you'll see on the next slide that I am a mom to three kids, which is amazing. Um, in like 99% of cases, the 1% being the times that I'm trying to do a webinar or do a business call uh, or a one-on-one -on -one with someone and I have kids constantly coming into my, my office space. So I've got three major things going on in the background. I have laundry going in the background. I have my two kids home and my husband's watching some movie in the other room. So I am going to firstly apologize if there's any strange noises coming from other parts of the house as we go along. Uh, but hopefully this goes smoothly and we're good to go throughout the evening. So as I said, I am a mom to three kids and this is the reason that draws me to um, teaching all about essential oils as much as I can, simply because they have made such a significant difference in my life as, as a mom, uh, as a human being to begin with. As a woman, it was they have been extremely supportive to my own health and well-being, uh, my own sanity, and but mainly it's been my kids right because i think regardless of who regardless of who it is what regardless of what we have going on in our life as moms i don't know anyone who just simply doesn't want the best for their kids and for me this is where this rang true when i was introduced to doTERRA it was about four years ago and we were up at a family cottage in northern ontario canada and what was crazy about it is that when we got up there i had uh, we had entered into major bug season. And for those of you who don't know what cottage country in Canada is like in June, I'll tell you there are more bugs up there than I can even handle. Um, there are mosquitoes and deer flies and black flies and all of those nasty guys. So it was, we did not, we had forgotten all of our bug spray. And so we wanted to um, have some type of natural solution. And I was introduced to doTERRA. So they have a natural bug spray. And then what I found out was that lavender actually helps to support uh, bug bites in terms of reducing the itchiness and the inflammation around them. So I just started using those essential oils and it kind of opened up to this massive passion of mine where uh, once I started bringing essential oils into our home, we learned how they could support our immune system and our sleep and our stress levels and our emotions. And I just feel like I stumbled upon something that was honestly truly magical. It blew my mind what I was able to accomplish, what I was able to um, use these oils for and it kind of, I call it like my mom's toolbox or my home health toolbox, which is simply the tools that I have in my home that I can use for both self-care and healthcare purposes. And you hear me talk a lot about this either on my website or in different webinars and on Facebook and so on, because I just think it's really important to have uh, that toolbox at your fingertips that you know that is safe, that's effective, and that you can trust when it comes to the health and well-being of you, yourself and your family. So these are my three kids. These photos are actually kind of old. I have to update these. My, uh, the, my, the one with the green hair there where that was like the cool thing to do, use Kool-Aid to dye her hair is Kaylee. She's now 11. Blake is our boy. He is nine and Maggie is five. And uh, you can see, catch her bare bum <laughs> in Blake's picture there when she was about two. Um, so this is, this is our home and or these, these are my kids, I should say, that make up my home with my husband and I. Uh, we live north of Toronto, Ontario, and uh, for years, my husband and I worked together in a chiropractic practice. I am a holistic chiropractor by trade. Uh, we ran a, we had a family-run, family-focused practice where we just worked with a lot of families, and families were referred to us not just because of the adjusting techniques that we use, but more importantly for the values that we instilled within our practice and how we would educate people on self-care and nutrition and movement and different forms of healthcare options that they could have. And so when essential oils were brought into our home, it was just this very natural extension to everything I had already done as a chiropractor. So these three little twiddle bugs, as I like to refer to them, are the reason that I just became so interested in doTERRA and started to teach and empower other women, specifically moms, to bring essential oils into their home and be able to utilize them as part of their family's um, self-care and healthcare routines. So why is this important? We are part of a culture where the value placed on a mom or dad's intuition has been significantly diminished. We no longer trust ourselves to know the response of our own children. 
symptoms tend to be met with fear because it's been driven into us by healthcare practitioners, drug companies, and the media. And it's fascinating. Dr. Stephen Cowan says that studies have shown a mother's intuition is more powerful than any lab test in picking up problems. And I can attest to this myself. Um, a little, a very short story with regards to my son, who's now nine. Uh, about two years ago, we ended up in a really somewhat scary situation with him. Um, he had ongoing digestive issues that were, we just couldn't put our fingers on. He would start with these vomiting episodes and not stop vomiting for days at a time. And we're talking like every 45 minutes to an hour. And my husband and I have always had a very hands-off approach to the emergency health care that we go to. Um, we use it when it's needed, but we are very somewhat intuitive when it comes to watching our kids, being aware of what their health is looking like, how they are supportive, um, whether they're responding to their health concerns, whether they're reacting to their health concerns. And by that, I mean, let's take a fever, for example. So when some when a child has a fever, um, when, you know, people get really freaked out by the number on the thermometer, whereas I tend not to look at just the number, but I look at the whole child. So if my kid has a fever, yes, I'm aware of what the number is, but I'm actually more concerned um, when a child has a mild fever uh, or a lower temperature compared to that, to what is a higher temperature or a higher fever, um, if that child is not responding well, if they're not eating, if they're lethargic, if they're hardly keeping their eyes open, uh, if they're not wanting to be cuddled, if they can't keep fluids down and pee on a regular basis, if they are just simply, honestly, not themselves. I'm more concerned about that child with a low fever rather than the child with a high fever who is open to cuddling on a couch, who's watching a movie with you, who is able to eat or drink some broth or some keep fluids down. Between the two, Regardless of what the number says on the thermometer, I'm more concerned about the one that's just not themselves. That's the one that I say, you know what, that's what we have to watch. And I feel that if we only look at one thing, like if we only look at the, the number on a thermometer, we are losing the bigger picture. We're not seeing the child as a whole. And simply that symptom, we may think like, oh, well, the number you know isn't too high. I'm not going to worry yet. Whereas clearly the other symptoms are showing it's a whole different scenario. And really that child is in great, more danger than the child that uh, has a super high fever that is acting somewhat themselves, although a sick version of themselves. So bringing that back to my son, um, we kind of, you know, we started going off to the, the our regular pre, uh, medical doctor and they weren't too concerned. They did a little bit of blood work. Uh, we had actually started with our naturopath. They had done some blood work as well. They were raised some red flags, so we ended up going to our medical doctor, um, and the blood work was coming back abnormal, and we just thought, you know what, they're, they're, but he didn't seem to be concerned. But going back to what this Dr. Stephen Cowan is saying, I knew in my gut something was off, and I didn't know what it was. I, I, don't, I can't look inside my child and say, oh, this is what it is, but I knew that something was deeper and that we weren't getting the answers where we, where we were, uh, that we were being given. So we were referred to a local pediatrician and they went through a very, um, I mean, they were all lovely, but it was a very basic history. She looked at the blood work and said, oh, well, let's get it retested every, you know, three to six months. But what they weren't seeing is what my son would look like when he would start with these vomiting episodes, because when they would hit, um, you couldn't get him off a couch. I mean, he was throwing up every 45 minutes. It was very difficult. We, he was in extreme pain, which is the other red flag that showed up in our house in our minds and we just knew that there was something deeper than what was being um, looked at by the medical profession. So long story short, after about six months of these ongoing episodes, we ended up one night I got home from work, uh, just had finished my shift at our chiropractic practice and I got home and Blake was on about day four or five of these vomiting episodes. And my husband just looked at me, he goes, you know what? It's not even the vomiting that scares me, it's the pain. And I just, we're out of options here. We don't, we had tried baby Tylenol. We had tried children's Advil to try and keep the pain away, but he would vomit it up immediately. And, you know, my husband and I just looked at each other and we're like, you know what, we're going to the hospital. And we packed, uh, well, my husband stayed home. I packed my son up. I gave him a bucket and we drove down an hour and a bit to a local children's hospital in the city of Toronto. And within hours he was admitted. Um, overnight, we started seeing all of these different specialists and Anyways, not to go into too much detail with it, but long story short, 
which I could go on for hours about this experience, is that I knew in my gut something bigger was going on here. And we did. We found out that there were some significant blood issues uh, that he was having. And uh, we saw lots of different specialists. And at the end of the day, yes, he's fine long term. But we know that there might be some ongoing things that we have to deal with as we go uh, through with his childhood. And he's not an Emmy like imminent danger by any stretch, but I just knew enough to keep saying, no, this isn't enough. There's something else. We need to study this further. And after being told, no, no, this will pass. It's just the flu. It's just the flu, or there's something going on or something small going on. As parents, we just knew, right? Your intuition just knows. And I can't tell you the number of families we work with over years as chiropractors that just many times knew that something bigger was going on with their kids and they at that point needed to become advocates for our children and what's happened is that because of the media and healthcare practitioners and drug companies symptoms that maybe necessarily aren't those major ones or anyway anytime we see symptoms we're met with fear and they've always got that quick answer like oh we'll take a drug take something along those lines but we're not really looking at the deeper underlying cause of what these ongoing issues are so let's look at some statistics here. 69% of children have been on at least one course of antibiotics before the age of two. Antibiotics are given freely and often without verification of an actual bacteria in, bacterial infection present. Now, sadly, this isn't necessarily, I mean, it does fall on the, the shoulders of the medical profession, but often uh, medical doctors, when they do have parents that are coming in with a sick child, a parent will feel like they have not been heard if they're not leaving with a prescription. And so often antibiotics are freely prescribed simply because, well, it's just an antibiotic. And we, for years and years, have been giving multiple courses of antibiotics with something that could be a virus. So for example, a cold or a flu virus or something along those lines is not, those are all viruses and not helped by antibiotics, which by the way, also antibacterial Creams and all of that sort of thing, you got to keep that in mind that those are all the antibacterial hand soaps and hand sanitizers do nothing against the flu virus and the cold virus because they're not viral, right? They're not antiviral um, hand cleansers and so on. They're antibacterial. But doctors are feeling pressured into giving something. And so for, very, for a while now, antibiotics have been freely given. And of course, now everyone's aware of the fact that you know, we're on this rise of antibiotic resistant diseases that are growing because our bodies are simply adapting to antibiotics and more powerful antibiotics are being needed to be provided. Also, the rates of ADD, ADHD, autism, digestive disorders, ear infections, autoimmune diseases, cancer, allergies, asthma, and more at, are at an all time high. Um, I've got lots of thoughts on that, but cesarean section births are at an all-time high as well, ranging around 30%. And very few people are looking at the bigger picture is that, is this a cultural shift in how we live our lives? And really ultimately, is this a lifestyle issue? So when we address things like a certain disease, we will break it down and say, okay, well, where is this coming from? And we're very quick to uh, cause, uh, pin the cause on genetics, bad luck, bad genes, bad viruses, bad whatever, but we very rarely look at bad lifestyle choices. Now, I am no, by no means saying that all autoimmune diseases, all cancers, all digestive disorders, all allergies, et cetera, are a result of lifestyle choices, but very, like many different research papers and statistics have shown that anywhere between 75 to 80% of these major diseases are a result of lifestyle choices. And when I hear things like, well, you know, we used to have antibiotics as kids, or we used to eat uh, conventional foods, or we used to have all of these constant medications, or we used to use all of these homemade cleaners, um, you know, and we turned out just fine. I hear this excuse all the time. But in reality, I ask that we start to look at whether or not we did turn out okay. Because these rates of all of these disease processes are at an all-time high across the board, not just in children, but also in adults. We're seeing things like cancers and uh, arthritic diseases, autoimmune diseases that used to be in the population of 70 plus or 60 plus now showing up in 30 and 40 year olds. So yes, our lifestyle has played a massive role in this over the last 30 to 40 years. And it's time for us to wake up and say, hey, what can we do now 
to start reversing or certainly slowing down, certainly stopping, if not reversing all of the effects of these um, lifestyle choices that we've made over the years. All right, so look at some statistics here too. 493 chemicals are found in an average child's bloodstream. A 1993 study, yes, it's old, but still poignant, showed that 90% of children are exposed daily to 13 neurotoxic toxic pesticides in the foods they eat. 2009 study showed tap water showed over 316 different pollutants. In the newborn cord blood, there are over 287 industrial chemicals found. Blood tests of young children find plastic chemicals and hand soap ingredients from common baby products, even the natural ones. And 60% of children with a common cold are treated with antibiotics and of those children, they get three to eight colds a year. If you can start to see, like this, it just doesn't add up to me. It doesn't make sense. We're now, we have more information at our fingertips. We have more control at our, at, at our disposal as well when it comes to the foods that we choose to eat, the products we choose to bring into our home, um, the lifestyles that we choose to, to lead. We have more options at our fingertips, and yet we're still seeing these Statistics show up in current timeframes as well, just as much as they were showing up back then. All right, the big question, we wonder why this generation is so sick. So why, what do we start to do? How do we start to change this? Essential oils, obviously this is what this is about tonight. I'm gonna share with you now um, a little bit about essential oils. I'm going to share with you uh, how to use essential oils, especially safety and effect safely and effectively when it comes to our families and our children. But what I also want to show you is how to get those essential oils into your home because it's critical that we start to use at least one thing and start to at least shift over or change over one small thing in our life. And if it's not essential oils, that's okay too. Oh, there goes the dog. If it's not essential oils that, that's up for you, then that's okay. But consider looking at other options as well. And I promise you that in the coming months, I'm going to have so much content being brought to you in the form of webinars and through my website and so on to start looking at how different lifestyle choices can be made and how they can have an impact on our health and well-being. But tonight, this is all about essential oils. So why would we even consider this? My experience is that many moms and dads are looking for a natural solution for their family's self-care and the idea of a home health toolbox is appealing. Meaning, they want something that regardless of what time of night or what time of day they can go to, it's again, safe, effective, they trust the solution, they know how to use it, and they can use that as that first line of defense when it comes to supporting the health and well-being of their kids. They wanna look for something that is a proactive self-care model. We wanna take that power back. I wanna, like, if there's nothing at the, by the end of this webinar that you take away from other than this, this is critical. I want to empower you to start taking control in the health and well-being of your family. And if it means that you get to add in a couple of essential oils or start looking at health a little bit differently where you can start tapping into that intuition and trusting in your gut when it comes to how you can adapt to your kid's health, that is what I hope you walk away from with this. They're also looking, um, when we want to consider essential oils, something that yes is non-toxic, yes is safe, but also extremely cost-effective. These essential oils that we're going to go through to, to, through tonight are normally, are most of them are pennies per drop, and their bottles will last you a long time if you're using them properly. Uh, most essential oil companies are very different, and they ask you to use an exorbitant amount of essential oil in order to reap the benefits. Um, but what we're about to talk to is talk to about is doTERRA essential oils, and you'll recognize that their purity and their potency is so vastly different from most essential oil companies simply because we don't need to uh, use massive amounts of essential oil to get the benefit of the oils themselves. All right, so let's start diving into some of these oils. Lavender, for those of you who are not, I mean, I don't know how you could, you must be living under a rock, and I say that lovingly if you haven't heard of lavender. It's an incredibly calming oil calming for uh, emotions, calming for uh, skin. It's an incredible essential oil. It is supportive during fever. So earlier I talked a little bit about fever and the, the example of the very low fever with someone who's not doing well or not themselves, and then a high fever with a child who is responding the way that they normally would respond. Um, with a fever, 
fevers, as long as, and I make the caveat here that if you have a three month old or younger who has a fever, that is one of the situations where you want to get them into a medical professional as soon as possible. Um, however, if over the age of three months and your child is having a fever, a fever is a natural response to whatever infection your child is trying to fight off. So if you have, if your child has some type of bug or infection or whatever it is inside of them, what's fascinating is that it will multiply at regular body temperature. So at normal body temperature, whatever that bug or infection is, that virus, that bacteria is like having a little party in there and inviting all of its friend and it's just multiplying like rabbits all through the body. So our bodies naturally and brilliantly start to increase their internal temperature to kill off the fever, or to, excuse me, to kill off the infection, not to kill off the fever. So naturally what we have been told by healthcare practitioners and brilliant marketing on drug companies and probably by our moms and grandmothers is fever is something to be scared of. Fever indicates that there's something wrong. But if we are to look at the natural response of fever, which is simply to kill off whatever the infection is, why would we want to take a medication that stops the fever from happening? It just doesn't make sense when you think about it, because as long as the fever is there and a child is responding well and they're doing what they need to do in order to heal themselves, we want that fever to cook away a little bit and stop to or help to break up the infection and help to uh, kill off whatever is invading the system. So lavender, unlike medications, will not kill the fever. If you look at a baby Tylenol or uh, an Advil that's there to simply uh, destroy the fever, as a result of that, you are allowing that infection to proliferate. So lavender is very different. It doesn't work to kill the fever. What it does is work to calm the child and make them feel cooler, even though it's not actually depressing their internal body temperature, okay? Lavender aids in better sleep at night. This is, first of all, my daughter, Maggie, she's five. It's her favorite essential oil. It might have been taken over by wild orange and lime recently, but pretty for the most part, lavender is pretty high on her on her list. You'll often see in my Instagram stories, if you ever watch me on Instagram, you'll see me talk a lot about uh, Maggie's obsession with lavender. So she, we use lavender in her diffuser at night. Each of my kids have a diffuser in their rooms. So we'll put a little bit of lavender in her diffuser or we'll do a drop of lavender on her pillow. And it's just a beautiful way to help get a better night's sleep. It takes the itch out of bug bites. I mentioned this earlier. I'm telling you, my friends, this is it. This is, I mean, how many times have you been bitten? Or for that, not only that, but also had uh, a bee sting or something along those lines. You can apply lavender to the bug bite or bee sting and it will take that discomfort away. Okay, it also soothes skin discomforts. Rashes, itchy skin, um, eczema, lots of different, lots of different uh, skin conditions it, lavender can help with. It's a great addition to homemade diaper cream, owie sprays, cleaning products, and skin salves. I'm a big believer in do-it-yourself stuff. I love, love, love teaching people how to do, uh, make their own um, creams and sprays and so on because why would we spend lots of money on products that are laden with chemicals and stabilizers and um, you know anything to just sort of keep it from going bad when in fact we can use these products and use natural essential oils that are plant-based, 100% pure, and use them in order to help and support our, our kids' bodies. So lavender does come from the flower of the lavender plant, and lavender by doTERRA actually comes from Bulgaria. It used to be sourced out of France, but one of the things that doTERRA is committed to is not over-sourcing um, a plant material. So we're never going to endanger that species or create instability within the environment when it comes to, to sourcing. So while we will never compromise the essential oil in, in terms of the quality of the oil, because we will always, always, always source those plants from their most native habitat. So in fact, lavender grows naturally in Bulgaria and France. That's where we will always grow the lavender from. And doTERRA is so um, committed to this in that they will not, um, they would rather lose money and not sell lavender if it means that they would over source a plant product. So it's a really great way to know that you're getting high quality essential oil, pure essential oil, and when they're coming from their most native habitat, it's going to give you a higher therapeutic value from the essential oil. We could all grow lavender in our backyard. I get that, it's not difficult. 
but the lavender that you grow in your backyard is not clearly going to be, it's not native to Canada. So you're not going to get as good of a therapeutic yield compared to what you would get um, in Bulgaria or, Lav or France. On guard, oh my goodness, my friends, this is my favorite essential oil blend. I don't know why my graphic is a little pixelated there, but this is my favorite essential oil blend for families because this is going to be your immune support. If you have kids that are in high, uh, high school, elementary school, uh, daycares, anything where they're exposed to a lot of kids, even going to the local indoor play parks or pools where they're exposed to lots of viruses and bacteria and so on, this is going to be the oil blend that you use all of the time. I diffuse this essential oil blend in our home from October through to about April, pretty much every single day. And I put on guard on the bottoms of my kids' feet before they head off to school because it's an, a delicious blend of clove, cinnamon, wild orange, eucalyptus, and rosemary. And it is there to support a healthy immune system. So the clove in there is actually on earth. There is not a plant material that has is higher in antioxidants than clove. Very high in antioxidants, so it's a great immune support. Um, and then, of course, that's coupled with the cinnamon, wild orange, eucalyptus, and rosemary, which all have equally impressive uh, immune su immunosupportive properties as well. Uh, the On Guard, I mentioned earlier, I like to put it on the bottoms of my kids' feet. I'm going to talk about diluting and dilution guides in a little bit and the importance of diluting oils when it comes to our kids. But when we apply essential oils to the bottoms of feet, the, this is where my chiropractic nerd comes out in me because your nervous system, which consists of your brain, your spinal cord, and your nerves that come out of each spinal level, they trace throughout your entire body. So you have nerves that come from your low back all that go all the way down your legs into your bottoms of your feet, which is why you're so super ticklish down there. And same goes with the palms of your hands. Those tend to be the more ticklish areas. Um, those nerves can uptake the essential oil from your feet and zip it through your body really quickly. They have shown studies that once uh, easy air, which is a respiratory blend, is applied to the bottoms of the feet, they are picking it up in the breath of an individual, kind of they'll use like a breathalyzer test that um, kind of like what policemen will use when they've stopped over an impaired driver, something similar to that to test for essential oils. And within 20 minutes, you can see the easy air in the breath. And if you don't believe me in this, I would suggest everybody, for those of you who already have oils, grab your peppermint bottle. And I want you to put peppermint on the bottoms of your feet. And then I want you to go wash your hands so that you don't, you know, by accident, like brush it across your face. Um, and just every once in a while, I want you to suck with your tongue up at the top of your mouth. And usually within five to 10 minutes, you will taste peppermint in your mouth, even though you applied the oil to the bottoms of your feet. So it does... Um, hit through the body really well. With On Guard, it also, yes, it comes in the drip oil, it comes in a diluted oil, it comes in soft gels, which are great. It's kind of like a, um, an alternative to a Tylenol cold and flu. They have beadlets, which are great just to keep um, on support for, for you when you've got um, your health in, on a daily basis. Uh, they have throat drops, toothpaste, hands soap, and different cleaning products, including uh, dish detergent, not dish detergent, laundry detergent, excuse me. On guard, because of its cinnamon and clove, you absolutely want to dilute that. But again, I will talk to you about dilution ratios in a few moments. All right, frankincense. Oh, mamas. This is the one for all of you out there who have um, new babies. This is going to be the oil for you. I want you to use frankincense and you just do a drop at the crown of your new baby's head, uh, either when they're first born or when you're nursing, because the Frankincense is considered the oil of truth, but it's a beautiful connecting oil and bonding oil for mom and baby. So you can do it at the roof of your, at the top of your head. You can also do it at the crown of your baby's head, just as they're nursing or the, as you're holding them and feeding them. Uh, and when they're first being born, it's just a beautiful way uh, to connect in with your baby. It's a great oil. Um, it's a calming oil. I like to put this in my diffusers at night with the kids. Again, it helps with neurological function. Uh, and the big thing here is that 80% of neurological growth or your nervous system, again, that's your brain, spinal cord, and nerves, 80% of that is within the first year of life. Holla! Do you think, can you see how important this is just to make sure that you have a great supportive of your uh, nervous system and frankincense is a beautiful oil to apply to the back of the neck or the crown of the head 
and it will help support a healthy immune system. It's also great for cellular repair. As moms, once we have lost that pregnancy glow, this is a really great oil to put one drop into your face cream and apply it to your face, um, but not only externally, internally as well. Not that I advise this for children because I think internal use of essential oils needs to be uh, held off on until they're in their late teens. But with um, frankincense, you can invert the bottle over your thumb so that your thumb becomes wet with frankincense and then apply it to the roof of your mouth as an adult. And simply by doing that, you are supporting the internal cellular repair of tons of different um, uh, organs and cellular systems within your body. If I were stuck on a deserted island, frankincense would be the oil that I wish I had with me because I just think it's such an incredibly powerful oil. All right, Easy Air or Breathe as it's known in the States. Easy Air is the one I talked about earlier in terms of picking it up in the breathalyzer test after 20 minutes of applying it to the bottoms of the feet. It's an oil blend of peppermint, eucalyptus, laurel leaf, melaleuca, which is tea tree, lemon, and ravensera. Um, it's also supportive of respiratory health. So think of this oil, at, cardamom is also in there. I, I knew I was missing an oil. I don't know. I must have missed that on the, the slide there. Um, think of this oil when it comes to cough, cold, congestion, runny noses, stuffy noses, sinus infections, even children with anxiety or asthma, difficulty breathing where they can't control their breath. This is a great oil to have them breathe in, apply it into their hands and have them cup their hands over their mouth and nose and just have them breathe over and over again. This is another oil that you do want to dilute simply because it can be a little bit more sensitive with peppermint, especially on young children's skin. So just always make sure that you dilute oils. Oh, Zengest. Zengest, or in the States, it's known as Digest Zen. We know that we have so many babies out there that have digestive issues, whether they're unable to breastfeed and, or someone's chosen to, um, to bottle feed. You know, there's so many different uh, formulas out there, but a lot of different formulas can wreak havoc on a baby's uh, digestive system. And then as we start to introduce uh, solid foods into their body, it's anywhere between you know, six to nine months. My kids actually waited almost 10 months until they were eating solid foods because they were doing totally fine on breast milk. We didn't need to add in extra foods. Um, you know, I think the youngest was Blake and he started at eight months eating solid foods. Uh, that six month rule, it, by the way, is, is simply, I see so many moms that like have exactly six months are ready to feed their kids uh, solid foods. And ultimately every child's digestive system is different. And again, you need to listen into the cues of your child versus worrying um, too much about what the number says on the calendar at that point. So, at, but regardless of when it is, when they do start to add in um, uh, uh, solid foods, their digestive system suddenly goes from one thing to a whole other thing. So it's a really great supportive of a healthy uh, digestive system and digestive response. It's a blend of ginger, caraway, peppermint, um, oh, caraway twice there, <laughs> coriander, uh, tarragon, fennel, and anise. It does have that sort of black licorice smell definitely dilute this, but you can use this oil for things like constipation, diarrhea, gas, bloating, colic, all of those digestive issues that little ones have. Dilute it and again, apply it over their belly or on the bottoms of their feet. Citrus oils. Oh yes. Okay. Lemon, wild orange, um, lime, grapefruit, bergamot. I don't know why lemongrass is in there. I've picked up a couple mistakes here. Sorry. I'm human. That happens. Um, there are so many different citrus oils, and this is just like, we have red mandarin, we have um, tangerine, there are so many different uh, citrus oils. These are always energy mood enhancers, and I love starting the day with some citrus oils and maybe a bit of peppermint in a diffuser in the kitchen. This time of year, I don't have to worry about it so much because it's summer break and my kids aren't grumpy when they come downstairs, but when they get a little grumpy as it's time to get closer to um, school, I love, love, love diffusing citrus oils mixed in with a couple of mint oils because it just sort of elevates the mood of everyone there. They're powerful cleansers of the air. You can dilute if used topically, especially in the summertime because you want to avoid sun exposure for up to 12 hours after use. So if for whatever reason you've applied lemon to your arms, your face, or wild orange lime, whatever, bergamot especially because it is the most photosensitive oil, please do not go and expose yourself to sun. Um, immediately after the use of essential oils with, with citrus oils. All right, let's look through some tips here. 
always begin with diluting oils until you are comfortable with knowing how each your, of your children respond. Here's my thing. I've got three kids. My eight, my nine-year-old, excuse me, in the middle is the one that ended up at the, at the hospital and so on. So we know that his digestive system, for example, is pretty sensitive. We also know his skin is sensitive. He's the first to burn. We have to make sure he's you know, zinced up basically with some, some all natural sunscreens. So we're just always mindful of, uh, of his whole system. Whereas Maggie, who's five is not as sensitive. Uh, she tans really easily. She's, you know, outgoing. She's very open. She's very independent. Like she's just got more kind of a go with the flow type attitude. So I actually dilute more with uh, my middle child, Blake, even though he's three and a half years older than I do with Maggie, simply because I know that he needs higher dilution ratios than his sister does. And that's just simply learning, again, tapping into your, to your intuition, learning what works well for each of your children. Introducing your children to essential oils by letting them smell the bottle and then introduce a diffuser and lastly apply topically. Kids, are, kids always go with their intuition. They're brilliant with it, right? They know what they like, they know what they don't like. Have you ever watched kids in a crowd or if you maybe introduce them to someone uh, and they just, you can tell that they're not comfortable with whoever that person is or they might not be comfortable in a situation, so they walk away from the situation. Uh, we know that they wear their emotions on their sleeve, so they're very in touch with how they feel. The same goes with the essential oils. If my kids don't like an essential oil, I don't push it on them simply because I know that it's going to be beneficial for them. I let them come back around to it maybe a few days or weeks later um, and recognize that they need to sort of lead by their intuition and decide what they really wanna use. Uh, but introducing a diffuser into their bedroom, allowing them to choose their oils of choice. I maybe wouldn't suggest peppermint at night because peppermint's an uplifter. It really kind of gets our system really excited and maybe might not be the best oil to be diffusing in the evening. Um, and then lastly, apply topically by starting again with the bottoms of the feet and then moving to areas where they feel comfortable with where they use the essential oils, keeping it away from mouth, eyes, ears, nose, and then any um, sensitive areas that are um, like we don't apply essential oils to vaginas, penises, anything along those lines, simply because we don't want um, that. It's just too sensitive of an area and that's not where oils should be applied. Uh, young children should not ingest essential oils. We don't, we use that well into their teens. My 11 year old has had a couple of citrus oils in water before, but really, unless there's something major going on, in which case, please connect in with me. I'm happy to walk you through some different protocols. Young children, should. there's no need to ingest essential oils. And if redness occurs on the skin, simply dilute with the carrier oil. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that right now. So carrier oils are what we dilute with. Carrier oils are not essential oils. They are a vegetable-based oil that you can pick up at an Amazon, your local grocery store, wherever you want to. My favorite carrier oil personally is... Um, fractionated or liquid coconut oil. I can pick it up at the health food store, but I tend to buy it off Amazon. It's affordable. It's quickly absorbable into the body. So it doesn't sit on the skin for an extended period of time. Other alternatives would be maybe a grapeseed oil, grape seed oil or um, a sweet almond oil, but ultimately fractionated coconut oil is what works well for me. When we look at dilution ratios, again, you need to use your mom's intuition, but there is an opportunity to simply look at ages as well. And when we, most uh, roller bottles, which is what you see there to the left of your screen, are, um, are 10 mil roller bottles. You can buy smaller ones, which are great as well. But for 10 mil roller bottles, for if we've got a child under a year old, I only do one drop of essential oil and the rest is going to be fractionated coconut oil. And you can start to see how you slowly add up. And then between one to five years, you can add some more drops in. But keep in mind that essential oils do not need to be... Um, neatly. Diluting them does not minimize the effects of the oil. It decreases any chance of sensitivity and it slows down the process that essential oils are absorbed into your skin. So there's lots of beautiful benefits of diluting. I think diluting not just for children, for adults as well, is, is a great way to introduce yourself to oils. Um, there's a few oils like tea tree, lavender, frankincense that you don't have to worry about as much, but certainly the more sensitive oils like peppermint, zengest, uh, Easy Air, On Guard, uh, and any citrus oils for sure, you definitely want to dilute. All right, let's go through some, you know, these are going to be more for younger kids, but they're kind of neat little uh, sprays. And then I've got 
uh, something for lice as well that I want to talk to you about. So this will be for kids that have fears of monsters, fear of the dark, whatever it might be. You can get a spray bottle like the blue one you see there. That's not a 30 mil, but you can get a spray bottle. Do five drops of lavender or serenity, which is a lovely uh, uh, lavender based oil that's very sweet smelling. It has Roman chamomile. Uh, it has sweet um, vanilla absolute and sweet marjoram, a couple of different oils in it. Vetiver, it's a beautiful sleep oil. Five drops of balance, which is a grounding blend. It's more woody. It smells like you're in the middle of a forest to me. Five drops of bergamot, which bergamot is a beautiful adaptogenic oil, meaning it can either elevate your mood if you need it elevated, or it can depress your mood or quiet your mood down if you need it to be quieter. So bergamot is a beautiful citrus oil. Um, it comes from Sicily, and you can apply those and then add up with water and then have the kids with you spray the bottle over their bed, on their pillow, um, closet, and floor before, the, before bedtime. And that way they feel like they're taking control of the situation. Okay, moms, this is it. Let's lay it down here. We all need kids who are going to sleep. And this is my diffuser blend that I use when my kids are driving me crazy and won't fall asleep. Vetiver is a very thick, grassy oil. Uh, it is an incredibly intense oil out of the bottle. But when you get one drop of it in a diffuser and mix it with balance and serenity, I'm telling you, it's like lights out. I use this blend, it's absolutely amazing. I absolutely adore it. It's a great blend you can also put into a roller bottle and roll it onto the backs of their necks, the bottoms of their feet. But I'm telling you, this blend is amazing. Owie spray, all right. My frankincense is cut off in that picture, but mums, we've all been there. Kids are gonna fall, kids are gonna scrape their knees up and everything. Melaleuca, which is the one there, I didn't talk a lot about that oil tonight, but I'll tell you, this is a non-negotiable in my home. We will never run out of melaleuca ever because it's just an oil that can be used to, it's an antibacterial, so it can be used for cleaning off my countertops. It can be used to clean out the cuts that my kids get. I think Maggie, or again, our five-year-old, it's like she's learning to walk again. She has so many band-aids all over her body right now, and we are simply using melaleuca to help cleanse the cuts. It does not sting, your, my friends, so it's a great oil to be able to apply topically. It is also my oil of choice, along with either peppermint or clove or on guard to ward off lice, which is great because when our kids are going back to school, you want to make sure you're well protected. So, but for the owie spray, you're going to have a spray bottle. You'll do a combination of lavender, tea tree, and frankincense. You're going to top it out with both fractionated coconut oil and water and use that spray bottle on the cut. Lavender is a calming oil, so we know it helps with tissue regeneration. Frankincense actually is fabulous, again, for tissue and cell regeneration. And tea tree is an antibacterial spray. So this is my absolute favorite owie spray to have around the house. It's so great to have for kids. And anytime they um, injure themselves, I just grab a spray bottle, spritz, spritz. And then once it dries, uh, if need be, you can throw on a Band-Aid. Now, when it comes to lice, you do want to use tea tree, and then you also want to make sure, as I mentioned, you use peppermint, on guard, or clove. And the reason being is that for decades, we have used tea tree oil to ward off lice, which is great, yay, but lice have adapted over time, and they just are not as responsive to tea tree oil as they used to be. So you just want to be mindful of it and add in either the peppermint, clove, or on guard. All right, let's talk about this. Um, Diffuse, how to get these oils into your home. There are three main kits I wanted to talk to you, and then I want to also talk to you about a fourth kit that I think even if you already have essential oils, you need to know about simply because it's ideal for having around uh, family homes. So the Aroma Touch Diffuse Kit is the most affordable kit within doTERRA. It's a starter kit. So doTERRA is a membership-based service. Um, each of these kits, or sorry, each uh, for a one-year membership, it is $42 in Canada or $35 in the United States. And that membership gets you 25% off all the products that doTERRA has to offer. With the Aroma Touch Diffuse Kit, that $42 with any of the kits, the $42 is waived. So when you see that price of $180, you do not have to add $42 on top of it. In this case, you get 5 mil or 85 drop bottles of Aroma Touch, which is a massage blend. Deep Blue, which is great for um, uh, shin splints or uh, growing pains any type of inflammation or injury. If you've got an athlete in the family, that's the oil that you want to have. 
We also have lavender, peppermint, tea tree, on guard, wild orange. Oh, I have peppermint on there twice. Hold on. Tea tree, on guard, one, two, three. I'm missing one. Aroma touch. Oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I am missing one. What am I missing there? <laughs> Sorry, this is one of those moments. Deep blue, I mentioned. Peppermint I entered, wild orange, on guard tea tree, lavender aroma touch. Anyways, I'm having a brain fart there, but petal diffuser and fractionated coconut oil for uh, diluting. I'm like having a complete brain fart. Anyway, so that kit is 180. And um, right now with this kit, if you order it, you will also get a, a 15 mil or 250 drop bottle of wild orange this month alone in June, in July, excuse me. The Home Essentials kit is the exact same kit no, excuse me, the Home Essentials Kit, I've got those mixed up. I apologize. Gosh, tonight is just not my night. The Home Essentials Kit are the top 10 most popular oils. This is the most popular kit in Canada. So you're getting 15 mil bottles or 250 drops of lemon, lavender, peppermint, frankincense, tea tree, oregano, On Guard, Easy Air, Zen Jest, and Deep Blue. Uh, you also get a petal diffuser. With this kit, during the month of July, you'll get a bottle of wild orange as well. And you will get a bottle of Copaiba, which is an incredible cellular repair and pain oil. Um, you've heard potentially of CBD oil, which is the oil of marijuana. Uh, the Copaiba is the um, a, a variation of that, but it comes from the same plant, but it does not come from, it's not stemmed from the same area. So you do not get hallucinogenic effect with uh, Copaiba. So it's a great oil to have around the house for pain, inflammation, cellular repair, all of that good stuff. So you'll get both of those free oils with this Home Essentials Kit. This is the most popular kit. There is a kit called the Family Essentials Kit, which is the exact same kit. It just comes in smaller bottles, 85 drop bottles. You also get two bottles of uh, peppermint beadlets. There's an On Guard beadlet show in there, but you get the peppermint beadlets in Canada. Uh, this one is 185. You'd also get a bottle of Wild Orange with this. My the difference between the two, if we go back for a second, you're getting three times the amount of oils plus a diffuser for less than twice the price when it comes to the Home Essentials Kit compared to the Family Essentials Kit. So while both are lovely, I think a diffuser is a game changer for any family. It just makes it so much easier to use essential oils. Um, you can keep one on the main floor, then you can bring it up at night uh, and then invest in some other diffusers as you go along. Last but not least, this is the one uh, for any families, whether you already have essential oils in your home or not, I want you to see the doTERRA Touch Kit. So this is a nine millimeter pre-diluted roller bottles of nine of the 10 most popular oils. Lavender, peppermint, frankincense, melaleuca or tea tree, uh, Zen Jest, Easy Air, On Guard, Oregano and Deep Blue. So it's 215 Canadian. And what I love about these is that you can, they're pre-diluted, so you can automatically roll them onto your kid's skin. You don't have to worry about making up your own dilution ratios. And they are specifically formulated for individuals with either sensitive skin or that are specifically for kids and older adults. You can buy these oils. They're called the touch oils. You can buy them individually. So let's say, for example, On Guard, you wanted to buy individually, or maybe Zen Jest or Deep Blue or Lavender, whatever. You can buy them individually. I just love the touch kit because you save by getting all nine at once compared to each of them on an individual basis. All right, my friends, that is all I have for you tonight. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, you can connect with me on uh, social media with at the hashtag or at the, um, my name is Dr. Andrea Ryan. So Dr. Andrea Ryan. So Dr. A-N-D-R-E-A-R-Y-A-N, -E either on Instagram or Facebook. And um, so by all means, please send me a DM. I'm happy to answer any of the questions that you may have and better help you understand how to use these essential oils with your families. The nice thing when you get started with doTERRA is that you get incredible education from us. You do get a guide when it comes to this. You don't have to feel like you are unsupported. We will go through a one-on-one -on -one connection call where we explain how to use your essential oils, what to use them for with regards to your family, and then you'll get an emailed version of that to you as well. So lots of options there for you. I would love to connect in with you and I hope you've enjoyed this evening and I hope that you have a better idea as to how to use these essential oils for your children. Thanks so much and have yourselves a great day.